Good morning, everybody. So today we're going to talk about self-care. This is coming from a question that I received. I'm going to have a little sip of my coffee here. You can just imagine my little Mickey Ma or uh, Winnie the Pooh cup. <laughs> anyway, um, so this was a good question. And so the question was, again, about spiritual self-care. And the question and the thought process was, you know, I'm fighting myself to meditate, to read, to make time to enjoy what I'm doing in the moment. And I know it takes mindfulness and patience, but it's so easy to get derailed. So there, I really want to unpack all of that because I know this is a common thing that a lot of people are experiencing and there's a lot inside of all of that. The first thing is I always look at the language that people are using because there's so much disempowering language that we use all the time and we don't realize that we do this. So I want to kind of point out some of the language that was used. Um, fighting self. So fighting self to meditate, make time to enjoy what I'm doing in the moment. Um, and then an acknowledgement, I know it takes mindfulness and patience, but it's so easy to get derailed. Okay. So we've got, you know, fighting, fighting the self, having to make time and getting derailed. Those are the negatives in that commentary. And the interesting thing is that when you think of the question, that's mastery work. That's the hard stuff. <laughs> so what I'm saying is, is that we often look at these things as problems and we set them up in our mind as these obstacles, you know, and, and we hate obstacles. So we don't want to look at them. And we, in our mind, we set it up as a, a negative, but what it really is, is mastery work because mastery work means that you take something that's difficult and you just keep at it and you don't need to fight it. And you don't make anything do anything, right? You're not making yourself do something and you're not fighting yourself. You can. And if you, if you have that point of view, you absolutely will be fighting yourself and trying to make yourself do things. But the point of this is to view this as mastery work, not as a fight, not as something that you have to make yourself do. Does that make sense? Because when you do that, it's very unpleasant. And then you're always judging yourself that you're doing things wrong. And that is completely off track with what I think you really want to focus on, which is self-care, also known as self-love. Okay, so you don't make yourself meditate you meditate if you want to. So who, whose rules and regulations are you putting up against yourself? Who says you have to do anything? Who says you have to make yourself meditate? Who says you have to make yourself read? You don't have to do anything. So let me say this again. You don't have to do anything. Anything that you deem important in your life, you're doing at your own free will. So somebody else's expectation is hanging over your head telling you, hey, if you do all of these things, you're a good person. Hey, if you do all of these things, you're a spiritual person. You're doing everything right if you do all these things. That's not true. That's a complete fabrication. You have to do what feels peaceful to you. And you also have to understand that life ebbs and flows. 
There are times when you seem to have an abundance of time for peaceful activities. And then there will be other times in your life where it is filled with action. This is how life works. This is how you you acquire the things that you are working on. Life is not meant to be a constant meditation. Life is going to throw a lot of things at you and the mastery work is to find the peace within all the chaos, to live in the world and not let the world live in you. Okay, let me say that again. Live in the world. Don't let the world live in you. So mindfulness and patience and meditation and reading, those are all amazing things, things I recommend. Things that don't come easy. I run an academy. I'm an entrepreneur. I run a business. I have thousands of students. And you know what? I put reading into my daily activities. So at the end of my workday, I, you know, feed my dog and I take her for a walk and, and the walk is part of my meditation. I have to do it because I have to take her out. But this is also my time to get away from the digital world and just separate. And I'm breathing fresh air. It's a daily task that I have to do that I turned into a meditation. Make sense? You may be already doing things. You may already be doing things. I think I said that wrong. That you aren't even counting as meditation. So think about that. Because if you have pets and you're taking them out every day, that's a meditation if you make it that way. If you make that time the time where you're going to breathe and focus in on yourself, you're going to give yourself fresh air and love from your pets, love from nature, sunshine, rain, breezes. You're going to notice everything. That can be your meditation. That can be your separation from the world. And then when I come home after doing all of that, Reading is really important to me because I love it, not because I'm making myself do it. Do you see? I do it because I willfully choose to set time aside because it's important to me. So if you are not setting time aside for yourself for certain things, maybe they're not that important to you. Who says they have to be? Maybe you're trying to force yourself to read books that you don't really want to read. Maybe you're forcing yourself to read, you know, self-help nonfiction books and you really don't want to read them. You'd rather be reading fiction and you would be more inclined to sit and take that time to read or even listen on audiobook as a sort of meditation. But you're not doing it because you're trying to force yourself to be interested in other things that you think you should be doing. You see what I'm saying? Pay attention to yourself. There are times where I I am thirsty for reading nonfiction books. And then there's other times where I'm completely thirsty for fiction and I can't get into nonfiction at all. And I follow that. I don't let some expectation hang over my head that, hey, if I just keep reading self-help books, I'm going to be a better person. I don't worry about that. I listen to myself and I, and I create the, the sanctuary within myself, who I want to be, who I am. I listen to myself and what's important to me. And then I give myself what I need. That is self-care. So you don't need to fight yourself. You don't need to force yourself. Everything that you do that you care about is a willful act. So the mastery is making, let me rephrase that. The mastery time is not about making. See how the language is and I correct myself. The mastery time is about seeing, 
seeing where you are in the present moment and making choices for what you want in your life. That's what it's about. It's not about making. It's not about forcing or fighting. Mastery time is about taking those things that can be difficult, right? People think of time and it's always in famine. Not enough, not enough, not enough. Well, you have a lot of time actually. <laughs> you have a lot of things that you do, but you know, a work day is only usually if you're working for other people, eight hours a day. There's a lot of other time. That's also a lie to say I don't have time. Stop lying to yourself if that's what you're saying because you have a lot of time, but you might be wasting it scrolling or doing things that you don't care about ultimately. Just wasting time watching Netflix after Netflix movie. If you have other interests, schedule out your time to put the things that are important into your life. That's the mastery work is to continually look at your life and at yourself and make sure that you're making the right choices. I don't even want to say right because that means right or wrong. You're making choices in the moment. You're setting up a schedule for yourself and then you're being willing to adapt your schedule based on the flexibility of life. Mastery is not about this hardcore absolute. It's not about fighting. It's not about making yourself do things. It's about observing and witnessing yourself and putting the things in your life, even if you have to schedule them in, like I do with reading every after work, every day after work, I walk my dog, I feed her, I walk my dog, I come back in, she's content and I sit and I, I sit on the couch and I open my book and I read a little bit, even if it's only a few minutes. I read it and I get enjoyment out of that peaceful time and I sit and I look out at my sanctuary that I love, that I've created for myself to take in visually because it brings me happiness and peace. And I schedule that in. No one's making me do it. I'm not fighting against time. I live for those moments. So if you're forcing yourself to do something, then the question is, is that really what you want to be doing? But you won't know any of that if you're just always fighting everything. And if you're just casually saying, I try, I'm fighting, I'm, I'm trying. I'm always derailed. Life just happens. Again, sometimes it's full of action and sometimes it's full of peaceful quiet. And the mastery work is to continue to ebb and flow with those things and still manage to get in some of the things that you really choose and love. It's not about judging yourself. It's about having that wisdom to know when certain things are going to give, you're going to give more time to them. And then times where you're going to pull back from them because something else in your life is taking precedence. That's life. Self-care is about mastery, flexibility, and putting things into your life on a day-to-day -day basis that you love and being willing to be flexible with those things and to eliminate the words such as fighting yourself, making yourself, shooting on yourself. I know I should be doing this. Mastery is a willful act and it's a pleasurable act. So if you're feeling all sorts of angst around the spiritual, in quotes, things that you're supposed to be doing, and there's that word supposed to be, right? Very judgmental on the self. If that's how you're looking at mastery work, that's why it's not happening, because it's being seen as a negative, and it's not. Witnessing yourself in your day-to-day -day life is a loving self-care act because you're seeing what you need on a day-to-day -day basis and you're giving that to yourself. And you're not using excuses like, I don't have time. Because 
every moment you're in, you have time. Even as you're saying, I don't have time, you're taking time to say that versus something else that you really want to be doing. So I hope that that has helped you on understanding what spiritual self-care really is. It's just mastery work. It's just choices. And I hope that that has led you down a path that's going to be more agreeable to you. Love and light, and I will talk to you in our next video. Bye-bye.